the best in the world. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm a new to this whole YouTube thing, so if you enjoy, please like and subscribe. It means a lot. And we are going to get straight into the Raw recap. Okay, so to start out the show, we had Jay and Jimmy come out. Um, Jimmy starts cutting a promo, or Jay starts cutting a promo, and then Jimmy uh, kind of comes out of the crowd and uh, he he goes up to the ring and uh, they they start doing a little a promo battle and. Uh, Jay just talks about how he misses Jimmy so much, and uh, he he wants him to come back. And Jimmy uh, tells him that he's not the one who left. Jay's the one who left. And uh, he also tells Jay that uh, he's responsible for the biggest moment of his career, um, which I guess is implying that when he pinned Roman, uh, you know, I I'm the reason that uh, you got to pin uh, Roman Reigns. Um, so I think it's a callback to that, and, uh, we definitely got a callback to, um, uh, it's not a callback, but y you gotta keep in mind, Jimmy cost Jay the WWE, uh, Universal title. Uh, if you go back and watch the, uh, Roman versus, uh, Jay match at SummerSlam, Jay had him on the ropes. I mean, Jay was winning the match. He was going to, uh, leave the champion, uh, same as Cody, but anyways, the thing that cost him the match was Jimmy. So, I mean, that's really where this whole rivalry, I mean, this, this whole rivalry goes back to when they were born, but that's, that's really where this whole rivalry, uh, kicked off was at SummerSlam. And, uh, we are, we are getting some epic promos. J Jimmy, Jimmy's promo was great. I mean, I was really surprised by how good his promo was. I, I think he had the better promo between uh, Jimmy and Jay uh, of the two. Uh, but but he's basically just telling uh, Jay that he left he left the bloodline uh, and he left Jimmy. And uh, Jay says the biggest moment of his career is going to be when he beats Jimmy at WrestleMania. But unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. We're probably going to see Jimmy win uh, because of bloodline shenanigans. But uh, we'll see. I mean, we've certainly... We've certainly seen a, a team forming up to combat the bloodline with Cody and Jay and Seth. So we'll see how much that plays into their match at WrestleMania. But uh, overall, I think they had a great, uh, a great promo uh, together. Uh, next up, we had DIY or DX versus the Creed Brothers. Uh, yeah, so DX picked up the win here. But uh, the Creed Brothers look great. I mean, this was a great tag team match. Uh, both of these teams should be in the... Uh, should be in the finals, uh, or should be going to the WrestleMania match, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, only one can go, uh, and it's going to be DX. Uh, DX uh, won with the, uh, Shawn Michaels got a super kick on one of the Creed brothers, and Triple H managed to hit him with a roll-up. Uh, yeah, so DX is going to move on uh, and go to the uh, ladder match at WrestleMania. Uh, but either way, these guys had a great match. Um, I Either team um, could be a tag team champion. Uh, they're both great teams, and uh, they're both better than the Judgment Day. So hopefully we will get those titles off the Judgment Day soon. And honestly, I've heard a lot of people talking about um, them maybe splitting the titles at WrestleMania, the the tag titles. Uh, you know, at first uh, when I when I heard that idea, I thought it was I thought it was kind of a bad idea to be honest because uh, I, I don't know the tag division just seems so weak but actually i don't think the problem is that the tag division is weak i think the problem is that we don't we don't really see enough of them and uh we got some we're, we've been getting some good tag matches which uh another thing i know is a lot of people are probably thinking like why are we not getting any any big uh matches on raw you gotta remember uh the wrestlemania 40 card is they they've already had to redo the whole thing because of injuries and uh other other circumstances beyond their control so they're they're really not trying to have anybody who's uh, working at WrestleMania be injured. Uh, that being said, we are going to get to the main event with Becky Lynch, and she clearly does not care about her health. So, uh, I, I don't know. They're just playing it safe with a lot of these guys, and that's why we're getting so much uh, so much of this tag team. But I, I think the tag match was great. Um, I think the Creed Brothers and DIY uh, DX put on a, a great match. And uh, once again, they Shawn Michaels got the super kick, and uh, Triple H was able to win with the roll-up. So... Just a just a cool little match. Uh, also, the Creed Brothers had a couple cool spots. Uh, they actually had a lot of cool spots. Uh, they're, they're a great tag team. But uh, one of the ones was uh, they they had them in a double ankle lock. D DX kind of grabbed each other's hand. You know, an old callback to to some of the old NXT Black and Gold days. Uh, anyways, so let's move on. 
Oh, but uh, yeah, once again, DIY DX picks up the win against the Creed Brothers. Next up, we've got Katana Chance and Caden Carter versus Andy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. And honestly, this match was pretty meh. I mean, there, there wasn't really a whole lot to it. But we are still starting to see more of Candice LeRae's uh, dark side. Uh, she's definitely breaking bad out here. And I can't wait because I, I like LeRae. Uh, and I hope she gets uh, gets more time because of this. Um, so I hope this heel turn... Uh, Kind of sets her up for some more TV time. Uh, we'll see how it plays out, though. But I, I like what she's doing. I, li I like what she's got going on. You know, she's definitely got... Uh, of all the people in in the tag... In the women's tag match, she she is the one with the most momentum right now. Uh, next up, we have the Cody Rhodes promo. And uh, Cody just basically came out and uh, called Rock a loser. Uh, actually, it was kind of like... We, we got Homelander, Cody. It was, a, it was a really good promo. It's been a couple of days since I watched Raw... So I'm I'm a little fuzzy on exactly what he said, but uh, he was basically just going in on the rock the whole time. And uh, you know you know uh, we had the old Cody callbacks. You know he can't have a promo without his callbacks. So uh, there there were some of those in there. Uh, the the big line though was the the LDS the little dick syndrome line. So yeah he he hit him with that. I. Here's what here's what I'll say. I'm glad Cody's not crying anymore. We need more of badass Cody. This is the Cody that we need. Do not have Cody cry on TV anymore. I've heard some ideas that uh, maybe Cody could turn heel after WrestleMania. Uh, I don't think they're gonna do that, but I, I want to say this: Cody would be a fantastic heel. Uh, Cody Cody would be the best heel in the business probably if he did turn heel. Um, I don't think he's going to though. Uh, I think they are really going in with the babyface angle. Uh, he is one of the few people that everybody likes. Kids like him. Uh, old wrestling fans like him. Uh, he he's got a crossover appeal. And if you don't give him the title now, you're gonna you're gonna miss a chance to make a star. So, uh, but but if that's the case, you know we will have a chance to remake a Stardust. Um, anyways, let's let's move on. Uh, oh wait, Paul Heyman came out. Before I move on, Paul Heyman did come out, and this actually all sets up. Uh, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of remembering it now. The more I talk about it. Paul Heyman come out, came out, and he offers uh, Cody a chance to go to SmackDown, which I am recording this post-SmackDown, so I, I already know uh, everything that happened on SmackDown. But he invited Cody to come on to SmackDown to have a one-on-one -on -one with Roman Reigns, uh, and he says, uh, Tribal Chief's word, you know, if, if you promise to come alone, uh, Roman Reigns will come alone. And uh, I think we all believe that about as much as Cody did, uh, which is not at all. Um, yeah, uh, because Cody is not being a dumb baby face. Finally, we are getting a baby face that is, uh, somewhat intelligent. I mean, he doesn't make the worst decisions all the time, which I think is a good thing. I mean, we, we really need to, to switch up our presentation of baby faces. Uh, it clearly hasn't worked. Uh, w what we were doing in the 2010s clearly was not working other than for a couple people. Uh, so I'm glad to see we're getting some edge back on, on our baby faces. And I think that's all this is. I, you know, there, there's some people talking about dark Cody. I don't, I don't think we're gonna see it though. I, I think we're gonna stay, stay, uh, face. So, but we do, do like edgy, edgy face Cody. This, this is, this is the Cody we want. The, well, this is the Cody I want. I, if you, if this isn't the Cody that you want, I, I guess you do want the crybaby Cody. And in that case, uh, you probably want to see Cody lose at WrestleMania, and that's, that's okay. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, next up, we had Ricochet versus Dominic Mysterio. Uh, they they actually put on a pretty good match. Um, wasn't super long. I was rooting for Dom uh, because I'm kind of always rooting for Dom. Uh, but that's that's how I knew he was gonna lose, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Ricochet hit him with a Ricochet hit him with like a, a code breaker, but uh, Dom was on his knees. Uh, but Dom flew through the air uh, after the code breaker. Then uh, he he got pinned one two three and J D McDonough comes out to uh, try to beat up on, on Ricochet uh, gets just totally swerved uh, gets his ankles broken and uh, Ricochet le leaves like a boss so yeah uh, once again Dom taking L's no surprise there I don't have it on my uh, recap uh, notes but at some point we we get a Judgment Day scene and I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about it now. Andrade is back there talking with the rest of the Judgment Day. Damien's gone, and, and they're getting all buddy-buddy. And as soon as Damien walks in, you can tell, like, uh, him and Andrade are going to have some issues. Uh, there's there's some bad blood in the Judgment Day, and I think 
this whole Andrade thing is going to lead to the downfall of the Judgment Day. Uh, I think the this faction's kind of run its course. I mean, Rhea's ready to turn babyface. I think they might want to turn Dom babyface if they can. Uh, we'll see if they can. It's if they can. It's I think him and Andrade are gonna have some kind of crazy hardcore match or something. I don't know when that's gonna be, but I, I definitely see a Dom versus Andrade match coming up. Also a, a Damian Priest versus Andrade match. Uh, they're they're kind of setting up all of that. Uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, all I know is the Judgment Day is probably losing the tag titles at WrestleMania. They are they are losing the tag titles at WrestleMania. I'm not going to say probably. They are losing the tag titles at WrestleMania. And we are going to see some action happen with the Judgment Day. Uh, I, after WrestleMania, they are either going to break up or there's going to be some serious changes to that faction or the way they're presented. I think we've got big plans coming up for after WrestleMania. Um, that We are trying to finish the stories we've got. And then we are going to move on to our new set of stories. Uh, but they they have they've set everything up pretty well here. The Judgment Day's got a bunch of question marks, so we'll see how it all plays out. Next up, we we had the Sammy versus Gunther uh, segment. Uh, so Sammy and Gunther came out and they they do the whole contract signing. Uh, to to be honest, I don't really remember much of the Sammy versus Gunther contract signing. Uh, but that's just because Sammy like I know Sammy's going to lose the uh, match at WrestleMania. I I would be shocked if Sammy won, and uh, I want him to win. You know, I like Sammy, uh, so I'd like him. I'd like to see him beat Gunther, but uh, it's it's not happening. And uh, speaking of it, it's not happening. Um, Gunther did kind of flex on on Sammy, but the the real thing I want to talk about from that whole segment is afterwards, Sammy goes to the back and uh, he runs into Gable. Uh, and Chad Gable and Chad Gable is one. He's got a completely black suit on. We are starting Darth Gable. Uh, Gable is is beginning his heel turn. And uh, one, I saw a bunch of Gable fans on Twitter. Uh, they are really upset about this whole him not going to WrestleMania situation. Uh, but I think they just need to have a little bit of patience. I don't know. I don't. I don't personally think Gable is going to be the one that takes the IC title off of Gunther. But he's definitely going to beat Gunther at some point. And I think this heel turn is going to spark something big for Gable because he is a good wrestler. Um, I, I think just his character right now, he's lacking something. You know, he's missing an edge, and I think turning him heel is is going to give him that edge he needs uh, and hopefully really move his storyline along because his fans are very adamant uh, about uh, getting him pushed, and they clearly see something in him. I, I haven't seen enough of Gable to uh, really have made up my mind on him, but. Uh, I, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from this potential heel Gable stuff, so I, I hope they go through with that. And Okay, so next we're going to move over to the... Uh, this is actually uh, probably the least important match of the whole show, but uh, Awesome Truth versus Indus Sheer. Um, just a, a big nothing of a match. Uh, they put Awesome Truth up against Indus Sheer because they they knew nobody wanted Indus Sheer in the match, in, in the match at WrestleMania. So they're not going to boo uh, Truth and Miz if they put them up against Indus Sheer. Uh, that's exactly why they fought them, and uh, it, it it was about as much as you'd expect. Uh, awesome Truth won with a so one of Indus Shear's teammates was down in the middle of the ring. Uh, the other was on on the ropes. He elbows R Truth, and R Truth falls onto his back onto the other guy and gets a three count. Um, so that's how that match ended. And that's about as much as I want to talk about that match. It, it, I'm excited for uh, R-Truth. I like what he's been doing. Uh, but I like what he does on the mic. I This necessarily isn't... Uh, this tag team... Uh, the the Creed brothers should be going over either of these tag teams. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, next up, we got the Seth versus Drew promo. So the Seth versus Drew promo was actually fire. I went and rewatched it before uh, I, I did this recap. And uh, Drew is just coming with the heat all the time, man. And Seth... He had a couple of weeks there where he was kind of just getting... It felt like a little overshadowed, not super overshadowed. But um, his promo last week on SmackDown uh, that he cut on The Rock uh, was just fantastic. And he, he's been coming with the heat ever since, too. So him and Drew are really uh, up in their game in the promos. It showed in this promo battle, though. So Seth basically calls himself a spotlight junkie and says Drew's just the same. Drew kind of thinks about it, and he, you know, he's kind of like, you're right, but then he gets into, you know, I'm I'm not in this match because I deserve it. Uh, I'm in this match because I bloody earned it, and, and this man has earned it. I mean, there is no other person 
who should be fighting Seth Rollins. I think we can all agree on that. And I think we can also all agree Drew McIntyre needs to take this title from Seth Rollins at uh, WrestleMania. But uh, Seth Seth isn't going to make it easy for him. But uh, Drew, Drew says Seth's got his priorities all out of line. And that's what's going to cost him the title. He's not... Drew said, I, I've laid it all out for you, you know? I've told you what's important and what you need to be focused on, but you're just you're just too busy with the bloodline. And then uh, Seth Seth says, yeah, you you got your big moment and you've complained about it ever since. And because it happened in front of no one and it, it was crickets, whatever, you won the title. When everybody did come back, uh, Drew fumbled the bag. So... Seth was really coming with the heat. I mean, he's kind of making some good points. I I didn't see. I I wasn't watching uh, weekly whenever uh, Drew won the title uh, d- during uh, 2020. I I do remember thinking like Drew McIntyre won a WWE championship, but I did not know Drew had this last little this last little heel run he's been on is is freaking awesome. Like it's miles above anything I've ever seen Drew do. And I, I'm loving it. Uh, he is one of the best things on the show. Uh, he should be the world heavyweight champion. And I think he's going to leave WrestleMania as the world heavyweight champion. Uh, he's right. Seth is too distracted. This bloodline thing is going to cost Seth the world heavyweight title. Um, and Drew's going to save it. Drew is going to be our savior, guys. Uh, but Seth had a great promo, and Drew had a great promo. Uh, overall, it was, a, it was a great promo. Uh, next up, we had the New Day versus Alpha Academy. Uh, so this was actually a pretty good match, too. Uh, as far as all the tag matches went, they were all mostly pretty good. Um, the New Day versus Alpha Academy and DX versus the Creed Brothers, and by DX, I mean DIY. Uh, those were definitely the two standout tag matches, though. Um, I'd probably give the edge to DX versus the Creed Brothers, but New Day versus Alpha Academy was also a really good match. Um, one thing that really surprised me was how... Otis, like, can just catch people and just make it look completely effortless. Like, it, it's wild. Tazawa looked good, too. Uh, but they, they ended up... Tazawa ended up taking an elbow from uh, Xavier Xavier Woods. And uh, New Day got the 1-2-3. So they will be heading to uh, the ladder match at WrestleMania. And Alpha, Alpha Academy will be at home. Actually, they will probably be, like, in the backstage area of... WrestleMania doing doing little skits and stuff throughout the show. Probably Slim Jim related stuff, if I had to guess. Uh, okay, and last up we have Becky versus Nia, which was um, is that the only? No, okay, so Ricochet versus Dominic. So there there are two single matches on the singles matches on the card, but uh, Becky versus uh, Nia was a last man standing match, and to be honest, it was a freaking fire last man standing match. Uh, Nia has been putting on. Uh, great matches ever since she's been back. And, and I know people don't really like Nia, but I, I think she's earned some respect uh, uh, with these with these last few matches. Uh, but the one thing she's not earning respect with is her storyline. Her storyline is uh, freaking terrible. I don't know what we're doing with Nia or Liv. I know they're not going to be involved at WrestleMania. Like, they are not getting involved in Becky and uh, Rhea's match. It, that's going to be a one-on-one match. So Nia and Liv are going to be off to the side somewhere. I'm not sure what they're going to be doing. I, I imagine they're going to have a match. Uh, they might have a one-on-one. I, I'm not sure yet, but uh, Becky versus Nia, the match was freaking awesome. They they put on a hell of a show. Becky, you know, is going to show out like always. One thing, one thing that did bother me though, is there was one spot where Nia put a chair on top of Becky in the middle of the ring and sat on that chair. And, you can't convince me Nia shouldn't have won the match right there. I mean, there is no way Becky would have gotten out of that scenario. Uh, and in my mind, you should not put uh, you should not put your wrestlers in, in situations like that. Um, because when Becky got out of that, it just it uh, it just made everything look bad. I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know a better way to put it, but um, it, it just there, there's no believable way that Becky could have gotten out of that um, in, in under ten seconds. That was that was a match finishing maneuver. Uh, so one, they either shouldn't have busted it out, or they just sh- they should have used it at the end. But they shouldn't because if if Nia's not going to win, they, she shouldn't use that. And another thing about Nia is, ever since she's come back, they 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 try to do the same thing every time with Nia. They they call her a, a monster uh, and say she's big and strong, and then she loses every match that she's in. Uh, which if you're going to be a big strong monster, you you can't lose every match you're in. That's just, it, do, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's just makes it hard for me to, uh, 
by her character. And, and that's not her fault. That's She doesn't book herself. She doesn't make the matches. But um, it, it hurts her, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I, I don't think anybody really cares. But uh, if you want to see Nia succeed, uh, I think you've got to... Uh, you're going to call her a monster. you got to treat her like that in the ring. No, she's got to get actual wins. But uh, Becky... Uh, besides all that, besides that total rant I just went on, uh, back to the match. I, I'm not doing total breakdowns of the matches. I, we we don't have time for all that, and that's that's not really the point of these videos. I want to, you guys should go watch like Raw and SmackDown. You know, it's good right now. Uh, it's fun to watch right now. But anyways, uh, so one of the big moves that I do want to talk about: Becky manhandle slams Nia through the table through a table uh, from the apron to the mat outside the ring. Uh, just a crazy spot. I mean, these girls were really uh, going all out. They were, they were bringing out all the weapons. They were, they were using steel chairs or steel chair. They were using chairs. They were using the steel steps. They were busting out just about anything they could. Uh, Becky, Becky hit Nia with a fire extinguisher at one point. Uh, I totally forgot about that, but yeah, it was just a, a freaking awesome match. I mean, that was definitely match of the night. That or DIY versus the Creed Brothers, but I'm going to give the edge to Becky versus Nia because, I don't know, it's close. They're both really good matches. I mean, I, I really don't think, I, I think they're just different uh, different taste, you know? But th they were both very, very good matches. Um, But uh, for the win, Nia's fumbling around, as Pat says, and uh, she ends up in front of the announce table. They've got a ladder set up by, right next to the announce table. Nia's leaned over it, and Becky drops down um, a leg drop. Uh, she drops a leg drop on Nia, and that gets her the 10 count. Becky gets the 10 count, and after that, she uh, gets back into the ring, and when that happens, you hear uh, Rhea's music start to play, and here comes Mommy, and finally, uh, the real main event is here. Uh, mommy comes out and uh, she really just does a stare down with Becky, but it, it was a pretty good stare down, uh, all things considered. Uh, so hopefully, now that we've kind of moved past this whole Nia Jax storyline, and Liv's still all wrapped up in this, but they're just they're just keeping her on ice over there, uh, away from uh, the the storyline. We, we get uh, the Rhea versus Becky uh, stare down. And it's a good stare down, but next week we should really start getting into uh, the meat of their feud because they've got to start putting together a video package, and uh, you don't have a lot of time left. WrestleMania is coming up soon. Hopefully next week we will see those two in the ring with each other. Um, I mean, they're not going to fight, but uh, you know, maybe at least some promos. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Rhea looks like a million bucks. Uh, Becky Becky had a fantastic match. Nia looked Nia, Nia had a great match too. Um, and overall the Raw was a, it was a great episode of Raw. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. One thing I really want to touch on before I, I, I end this video, though, is the camera work in between, like, right before they would go to commercial, uh, like, right after a match, they would, uh, they would, like, either follow somebody out or the camera would move in a way that carries you to the next scene. And it immediately brought your interest into whatever they're doing now. So it, instead of, just like oh yeah it's time time for a commercial you're like oh let's get through this commercial so i can see the next segment the camera angles in general none of this camera work would be done if kevin dunn was still there so uh once again so thankful that kevin dunn is gone uh no no hate on the man but uh we are way better off without him yeah so i think uh i think it was a pretty good episode of raw and raw is doing pretty good it is three hours long it's hard to make it through the commercials interrupting the matches uh, it's it's freaking awful. Uh, I can't wait till we move to Netflix. They they have got to fix the uh, the commercial situation. But uh, over, overall, that's that's my general thoughts on Raw. Um, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe. It means a lot. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing some live. I I've recently unlocked short streaming or live streaming with shorts. I, I unlocked live streaming with shorts recently. And I thought about maybe going live uh, during Raw and SmackDown. Uh, if that's maybe something you guys would be interested in, let me know in the comments. It sounds kind of fun to me, but uh, if, if you guys aren't really into it, I, I don't really want to worry about it too much. But I definitely want to do uh, live shorts for uh, pay-per-views. I, I definitely want to do that. Um, so we'll see... We'll see if we, uh, if you guys want me to do those, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, we can, we can see, uh, we can gauge the interest and see if, uh, 
there's some people that want to do it. Um, the problem with my short uh, live streaming on shorts right now is I only have 96 subscribers or so at the time of recording this, or 94 at the time of recording this. So I'm only allowed to have my subscriber count plus 25 uh, and join those short live streams. So if you are interested in that, uh, you need to subscribe because it will not, you're, you're not going to get recommended those videos. Um, you, you are going to have to subscribe to see those. Uh, you might, I mean, I mean, I can't say with 100% certainty, but um, the chances are that you are one of those 25 people that will let in on top of the subscribers is pretty low. So if, if that is something that interests you, please uh, like, please subscribe. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you for the SmackDown review.